Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. We're excited to have you here this afternoon. Well, on our end, it's just about noon. We know in some places it might be evening, and in some other places it might actually be the dead of the night. We are glad that you joined us. We are glad that you chose to spend your day with us, whether it's morning or afternoon or evening. And today we have a well, you know, I don't know what to say because I'm so excited, but we have something, you know, a full package for you. Let me say we have a full package for you. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start. Please feel free in the course of the meeting to unmute yourself, raise your hand, whatever, you know, to join um, in the conversation. So let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Bola Odetopo, and I'm the CEO and founder of Parenting Initiatives. We are glad to have you here. I am your chief host this afternoon. So welcome again to our August webinar. As you probably know already, that's why you're here. Our title is, or our topic is branding for success how you can develop your personal brand identity. And I'm going to come back and properly introduce our guest, but let me just run through our agenda for today. So we're gonna, right now I'm doing the welcoming, then we're gonna take a poll. Um, this will be accessible on your Zoom. For those of you that are, are familiar with Zoom, you should just see the poll button at the bottom of your screen. And once I launch that, you'll be able to see the poll questions. And it's it's fun. It's just, there's no, uh, it's not, we're gonna, not going to score, you know, <laughs> I'll give you a grade, you know, just something to, to get us started. And then of course, we'll have the presentation. And like I said, in the course of the presentation, please feel free to engage with us on the chat, in the chat room. Feel free to comment, feel free to ask questions. Of course, if you have a question, raise your hand, you'll be recognized and then you can ask your question. We want this to be very interactive and we want you to you know, feel free to ask your questions, make comments and contributions and all that. Um, so who is PRI? We are a faith-based um, non-denominational organization and we are committed to helping parents fulfill their God-given role of raising well-rounded children. Of course, we are faith-based, so uh, our bottom line, uh, the Bible is our reference point, you know, for most things, for all things that we do. But of course, and everybody that's a parent needs help one way or the other. So we are open to parents of all faiths, of all, you know, denominations, of all beliefs, but we are faith-based and our beliefs are rooted in the Bible. Our vision is to enable thriving families with excellent parent-child communication in a conducive environment um, where a child's potentials are maximized. We believe that communication is very crucial and we are, our aim is to have you have excellent communication with your child at whatever stage of life they are. And our mission is to encourage, support, and provide resources for parents to raise their children and you know, ensuring that such children will be spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally sound, all-rounded, well-rounded children that can hold their own in whatever face, facet of life or whatever um, career they find themselves. So back to our topic, branding for success and how to develop your personal brand and identity. Our speaker is Edith Bojo, and she's the founder and CEO of Iris Media Company. She's a dynamic entrepreneur, social media manager, and the visionary founder of Iris Media Company, a digital marketing agency. She's armed with a Bachelor of Science in Psychology from the University of Georgia, Go Dogs, and an MBA from Southern New Hampshire University. She fuses the power of human behavior on human behavior understanding with business acumen to create impactful marketing strategies. With over a decade of corporate professional experience, Edith has excelled in various leadership roles, spearheading teams in sales, product development, and change management. Her extensive background has honed her ability to navigate complex business landscapes and cultivate innovation-driven solutions. However, it is her ardent passion for empowering small businesses that truly set her apart. Edith is committed to unveiling the authentic value of each client, guiding them towards success through distinctive and standard branding. 
as a seasoned social media manager, she harnesses the transformative potential of digital platforms to elevate brand presence, engage audiences, and foster lasting connections. With a relentless pursuit of excellence, Edith Ojo is at the forefront of shaping impactful brand narratives and crafting compelling strategies that drive results. Her mission is to empower businesses to thrive, embody their unique essence, and unlock the full potential of their brands in a rapidly evolving digital landscape. Please join me and put your hands together to welcome Edith Ojo. Okay, thank you so much to uh, Mrs. Odette Tokun and the entire PRI uh, team for having me on today. It's such a pleasure to be here. And I um, see that you guys already have a pretty good understanding of what branding success looks like based upon the answers that you've given. Um, so we'll talk about a lot of this going forward. Uh, but before we begin, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, and then we'll get into a little bit of the presentation. Um, thank you so much for reading off that um, uh, professional bio there. That sounded wonderful. And so it's great that you guys heard a little bit about me professionally. Now I'd really like for you guys to learn a little about me personally. So in order to do that, um, we're going to play a little game called Three Truths and One Lie. And so I know that there are some people on here that know me very well. If you do, uh, please don't play. Um, and if you don't, this is a great opportunity to get to know me. So I'm going to list off four sentences and three of them will be true. One of them will be a lie, um, just as the title states. And then that will be an opportunity for you to find out a little bit about me as a person. So here's some things that uh, you can find out. I used to live in Colorado. I have two children. I'm a middle child and I played the violin growing up in high school and throughout college. So I will give you guys a few minutes to figure out which one of those statements is the lie in there. <laughs> okay. And so which lucky person wants to tell me which one of those statements is the lie? Don't all shout at one. And you guys can be writing this in the chat. Number one, that I used to live in Colorado. You are right. And how did you know that? <laughs> well, you, if you guess that I didn't, I've never lived in Colorado, you've absolutely guessed right. I have never lived in Colorado. I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have never lived in any state other than Atlanta, Georgia. I am a true Atlantan, unlike all of the other Northerners that continue to move here and from Texas, all the other people that continue to move here. I am a true Atlantan. I am so true to Atlanta that I was born at Grady Memorial Hospital. So that should tell you. Oh, wow to Atlanta I am and that is something that is unique about me and so as we go on today we're going to learn what can we you know use in our own personal stories to identify um, ourselves throughout our brand stories so you guys have kind of answered a little bit um, of some of those questions about personal branding but what exactly does personal branding mean um, personal branding by definition, is the process of creating that unique story about yourself. Um, corporations also use this to create a unique story for themselves in order to resonate with their audience, with their consumers. And it's the message and the value that you have to portray to the world. And it's also the message that your audience will perceive about you as well. So before we begin, I'd like to take you on a little journey. And I'd like for you to picture it as we go on. The professional world is a bustling marketplace and you're the prized product on the shelf. That's the personal branding steps in. It's a secret sauce to standing out in a crowd of suits and spreadsheets. Think of it as your power tie in the digital realm. With a dash of authenticity and a sprinkle of strategic storytelling, you're not just a name on a resume. You're a vibrant story waiting to be explored. In a world where clicks and connections matter, your personal brand isn't just a buzzword. It's your backstage pass to the front row of opportunity. So today, as we learn how you are going to curate your own spotlight, because as we know, in today's fast-paced arena, it's not just about what you have to offer. It's about how you will shine while doing it. 
Your personal brand should be a unique combination of your skills and experiences that make you who you are. It's what makes you unique and sets you apart from everyone else. By developing your personal brand, you will be able to give yourself a competitive advantage. So I'd like for you to think about personal branding. And when you think about personal branding, what are some noteworthy individuals that come to mind when you think about personal brands? You can write them in the chat or you can just say them out loud. I would like for this to be as interactive as possible. So if you'd love, if you feel comfortable speaking up, just go ahead and do so freely. Here we've got Oprah Winfrey, Elon Musk, Michelle Obama. Um, Oprah Winfrey, your favorite TV auntie. Everyone relates with Oprah Winfrey without even having met her. Um, Oprah Winfrey has developed a personal brand around being empathetic, um, being authentic, and encouraging encouraging others to work on their self-improvement. Elon Musk, um, as big of a personality and as, you know, crazy as he might be to some people, he's developed a personal brand around innovation, disruption, and taking risk. Who would have ever thought that we would lose the ability to recognize Twitter by a bird by now seeing an <laughs> Who would have thought? Michelle Obama, the first African-American white um, uh, first lady to live in the White House, um, she developed a brand around education and empowerment. What's so unique about that is that lots of other first ladies have you know, been on the same mantle that she was on, but she uniquely curated a personal brand around those topics for herself that she was able to resonate with more people than other first ladies that came before her. Take, for example, these other three personalities. Sarah Blakely, if you're familiar with the brand Spanx, a lot of the ladies might hear you might own some Spanx. How many of you would feel comfortable talking about your undergarments in a room of business owners? Well, Sarah Blakely created a huge brand and a huge following around that. She created a personal brand around po body positivity, openness, and empowerment. And then you have Bill Nye. He made science look cool just around his own brand. And he made being a nerd like the next coolest thing. Um, he created a personal brand around um, science experimentation and his being okay with being a quirky personality. And then you have Michael Jordan, the GOAT, not to be confused with Kobe Bryant. He's not the GOAT. I know everyone wants to argue, but Michael Jordan stands as the GOAT. He's developed a huge, huge brand around sportsmanship, excellence, and loyalty. Think about his following. You have people willing to spend $200 plus on a pair of sneakers the moment that they drop just because it's Jordan. So that is the power of personal branding. And so it's also why you think about as you go down this journey, why does personal branding matter as you create your own story? It's not just for celebrities, influencers, big corporations. Everyone has a brand story and your brand story is unique to you. Your personal brand story should matter because it's your own narrative. It gives you an opportunity to showcase your value, whether it's in your industry or inside of your niche. It allows you to shape your impact on the world. It's the careful art of turning strangers into collaborators, if you have followers on social media, turning those into loyalists and also having opportunities turn into realities for yourself. Personal branding can transform your life in numerous ways. And so I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about why personal branding really matters for you. It matters because it can differentiate you in a crowded world. We've all been in the marketplace. If you've been on a job hunt, especially if you're a college student here today and you're coming out and you're looking like, how do I look different? How do I set up my resume to look different from all, everyone else? How do I go to this job fair? And I tell my story differently from all of the other college students that are trying to get a job just like me. Well, that's where personal branding helps you stand out. It's your opportunity to showcase what makes you unique, whether it's your skills, your experiences, or your perspective. The differentiation is what draws people to you. Um, it will be able to draw potential clients, employers, collaborations, and followers towards you. 
your personal branding matters because it gives you the opportunity to build credibility and trust. A strong personal brand builds credibility and trust when you consistently deliver value and portray authenticity. People will be more than likely to believe in your expertise and your recommendations. This trust will translate into stronger relationships, better career opportunities, and increased influence for yourself. Personal branding matters for you because it helps you direct your narrative. Your personal branding will be able to empower you to control your own story. So it's not someone telling your story for you. You are telling your story yourself. It helps you define how you want to be perceived. How many times have you come across an interaction with someone and they say, oh, well, I didn't know that you were like that. Mary Sue told me that you were so quiet. Or Mary Sue told me that, you know, you were loud and you were energetic. No, this is why having a personal brand gives you an opportunity to, to control your narrative in most situations. By strategically sharing your personal brand story, you're able to shape how others see you along your journey and how other people see your aspirations as well. Your personal brand will matter because it will be able to unlock opportunities for you. A well-crafted personal brand story will open up doors for new opportunities. It will attract clients to, to you. It will, um, you know, give you an opportunity to draw recruiters to your perf profile, um, even as inspire collaborations with other people. This is why your personal brand matters. And then we'll talk about this further on as we move along in this um, presentation is it gives you an opportunity to navigate your own digital presence. Digital presence is so important. We all have some form of whether it's a social media account or a LinkedIn account. Your personal brand also gives you an opportunity to make sure that even on the digital sphere that you are being cohesive in how you're shaping your story and owning your own brand. And then lastly, your personal brand is important because it gives you an opportunity to make sure that you're leaving a long lasting impact. A well-crafted personal brand has a lasting impact. It's an investment in your future, something that continues to resonate even after your career evolves. Um, as you achieve milestones, your brand adapts and reflects and grows. In essence, Personal branding is your way of owning your, your narrative, showcasing your value, shaping your impact, and defining yourselves before others have the opportunity to do that for you. It empowers you to take control of your story and mark your territory in an ever-changing landscape. So how do you do that in an ever-changing landscape? And how exactly do you actually define your brand? There are several elements that allow you to define your brand. And some of these elements are listed here on the screen. Having a purpose, it's your mission statement. Your purpose defines your intention. What exactly you stand for, what motivates you, what drives you. Secondly, being authentic, showing up as yourself everywhere you go. Whether you're at church, whether you're at work, whether you're walking into Walmart just to pick up a loaf of bread, do you show up authentically as yourself representing your brand at all times? You know, it's sometimes it's really funny if you sit back, if you have kids and you ask yourself um, and ask your kids to, hey, you know, can you talk about mommy or daddy in a couple of words um, and just tell me what you think about me as a person? And you know what? Your kids will tell you if you're really authentic all the time. Your kids are a good example of telling you whether you are truly representing what you model as a brand to the world, even in your home life as well. Expertise. We all like to have a purpose, be authentic, and demonstrate our personality around, but re really will stand for you when all of these things are not evident is your expertise. This will speak for you even when you're not in the room. So essentially, and I'll really tone this into college students or young 
students or just even high school students, this is as you're entering the workforce, are you consistent? Are you known for being dependable? Are you known for being hardworking? Are you known for always delivering on what you promised to do? Um, and then on top of that, does your work ethic or what you stand for, the purpose that you've defined in your mission statement align with the work ethic that you've actually demonstrated? That is your expertise that makes you an expert in your field or in your industry. Those two will be able to align together. And then the fourth element, being able to sell or tell your story. Storytelling is huge because it gives you an opportunity to actually you know, connect with your audience on an emotional level. How many times have you gone into Starbucks and you've gotten a cup of coffee and sometimes you just feel good because you drank that frappuccino and that, you know, cute little green straw was in the cup. That's Starbucks telling you a story and inviting you to bask in their brand already just by inviting you to be a part of that feeling. It's them inviting you into their own brand story as well. Connecting those pieces um, allows you to share along with their personal accounts, share along with the connection that they're building and building that trust ultimately. But then all of these four elements allows you to define who you are. Who are you? Many people will ask you um, as you go along to talk about your brand journey. Who are you? Tell me about yourself. This is a question that we commonly have heard. So tell me about yourself. How often have you heard this question? Whether you've been on a job interview, whether you've gone on a date, and how many times have you stumbled when you've heard this question? So I'm going to tell you a little backstory, just to be candid and a little bit vulnerable. When I was working for Home Depot on my lunch break, and lunch break, yes, is, you know, that time where we're away from our work and we've, uh, we're looking for an opportunity to escape. But sometimes when you're at work, even on your lunch break, you still need to have your brand story in top of your mind and be prepared for any interaction that comes around. I ended up on the elevator with who wants to take a guess? Just shoot out, shoot out any level of the company. Your CEO? That's right. I was <laughs> on the elevator by myself with the CEO at the moment, which was Craig Manier, by myself. And it wasn't just a short elevator ride. We were on the 21st floor going all the way down to the basement. And he happened to be going to the same place that I was headed. He was going to the lunchroom too. You know, the CEO does eat lunch. And I had nothing to say, literally nothing to say. I, I couldn't talk about myself. Maybe I had a little bit of a shock value, but I, in this moment, could not answer the question who I was. And that was a wake up call for me of, I need to be able to define my brand at any given moment. It was a missed opportunity for myself because I knew that I was in a department that was making really big contributions to the success of the company. And I needed to be able to highlight that at that moment. And I missed the opportunity to be able to say, hi, Mr. Manier, my name is Edith and this is what I'm doing and this is who I work for or you know anything like that within that time frame. but I missed the opportunity. And so that was a huge learning experience for me. So being able to have your brand story and know it um, authentically will be able to help you define your brand. Defining who you are would be the first step. And in order to do that, I would encourage you to you know, choose three words that you might describe yourself with. Um, you could start by asking close friends or family members or even coworkers about what words that they might use to describe you. You might consider things like your personality features or why people enjoy working with you or things that people consistently come to you for you to help them with. Um, are you obsessively organized? Um, do you have a quirky sense of humor? Are you a compassionate people leader? Anything that identifies traits that you can put descriptions around is what will help you stand out in a crowd. And then you want to be able to understand 
your audience. So think carefully about who your audience is. Um, is your audience within a specific industry um, or within a specific geography? What is the area of, um, of interest? Instead of casting a wide net that just tries to entice everyone, everywhere, focus on what's critically important to the one group you are speaking to and how they will benefit from what you are going to bring to the table. Then hone in on that message. You will be able to build trust and again, gain credibility within your specific audience by meeting their needs, which will be key. And then three, decide what you want to be known for. Your own unique core values are your invaluable traits that will help you brand yourself. Again, are you a dependable person? Are you consistent? Are you more honest than other people that you work with? Are you more open-minded? Are you more committed? What stories do your friends and your family consistently tell or love sharing about you? All of these things will be able to help you clearly define what values that you may want to focus on. And then you'll be able to shape that story around those values. And then lastly, be able to prepare your elevator your uh, your elevator pitch. In my case, I didn't have an elevator pitch. Literally, I was on the elevator with nothing to say, and I felt embarrassed once I got off. I beat myself up, um, but at the same time, I took some big learnings from that to never be so unprepared that I didn't have anything to say in big opportunities that I would miss. So. Being able to prepare your elevator pitch, it really should look like um, 30 to 60 seconds, um, not more than you know two to three sentences. And it should be a succinct story about what value you intend to bring and where you're going in your career, if that's what we're focusing on. And then it should make sense. Um, your story should be able to show off your best attributes. Um, you want to be able to highlight your purpose, highlight your authentic values, and then be able to speak to your audience clearly within that 30 to 60 second time frame. So we'll do a small little activity on the next slide and talk about um, what this template looks like. So this is an example. If you want to take a screenshot of it, you can save it and then fill in you know, some appropriate adjectives for your own self. It doesn't necessarily have to be leader like we talk about here. Um, but essentially, this is what an elevator pitch example might look like for someone who is um, in a, you know, business um, professional background or anything like that. Um, and then instead of just walking through this template, just word for word as it's on the screen here, I'm going to read off a um, elevator pitch that I've written for someone I've called him Joe, and he works in the tech space. And then we'll talk about um, some of the features of his own elevator pitch and what you can break down and what you hear from it. So, hi, my name is Joe. I am a visionary leader committed to reshaping the tech landscape for young children in rural Georgia by pioneering innovative solutions that drive positive change. I lead by fostering a culture of col collaboration, curiosity, and relentless pursuit of excellence. Leveraging my deep technical expertise and strategic acumen, I orchestrate teams that transform ideas into impactful realities. Together, I hope to create a tech. Together, I hope to create a future where technology doesn't just evolve but revolutionizes lives. So, who can tell me what Joe's purpose is? And if you need me to read it again, I can read it again. It says, hi, my name is Joe. I am a visionary leader committed to reshaping the tech landscape for young children in rural Georgia. By pioneering innovative solutions that drive positive change, I lead by fostering a culture of collaboration, curiosity, and relentless pursuit of excellence. Leveraging my deep technical expertise and strategic acumen, I orchestrate teams that transform ideas into impactful realities. Together, I hope to create a future where technology doesn't just evolve, but revolutionizes lives. So what is Joe's purpose? Okay, I see impacting young people, interested in and involved in tech, 
reshaping the tech space, growing the tech industry. Yes, correct. Driving positive change in Atlanta. Okay, so we do understand that his purpose is to revolutionize the tech industry. That is his field. That is his specific area of interest. Who within there is his audience? Can anyone tell me who within young people? Yes, young people are his audience. And did you also get that he mentioned specifically where he was targeting within there? The young people where? In rural Georgia, yes. What are Joe's valuable attributes that he will use in order to accomplish his goals? What key attributes will that, you know, does Joe have that he's bringing to the table that he's going to be able to accomplish his goals? He's collaborative, yes. Okay, we know that he's passionate. But what are his key values that he's able to bring to the table that's different from others? He ha He's a visionary leader, okay? He has a deep technical expertise, yes. And then he also listed one more value. And did anyone catch the last value, which was a strategic acumen? So he's got a business acumen, he's got a deep technical background, and he's a visionary, which is going to allow him to accomplish his goal of changing the technical space by reaching young people in rural Georgia, okay? Does anyone have any questions so far on how Joe was able to define his purpose and through using that template? Okay, no, if there's no questions at this time, feel free to still think about them and then we'll take some more questions throughout the end. All right, so now that we know what steps and tactics are necessary in order to define who you are in this space, there are two more things that I'd like you to consider as you define your brand story. The next thing would be your online presence. Your online presence is huge. So I'd ask you to think about when was the last time you Googled yourself and, you know, just typed in Edith Ojo and just looked at what came up. You'd be amazed at what, what's out there. Um, I Googled myself the other day and I was like, oh, they have some stuff from UGA. And I'm like, well, how was that even on there? Like, and I'm like, I'm glad it was a good grade that it was posted on there, not a bad one, but still there are things on your Google search that may come up that you may or may not be aligned with. It may or may not um, align with your own current values or your own personal brand statement. So it's always, always um, recommended and important for you to kind of just routinely Google yourself, um, look at what comes up, um, and then you might want to consider unpublishing or deleting um, some of those things. You might want to consider hiring a third party. Um, there are some products and some professional teams out there that can help you work on that algorithm. Um, you know, getting some of the information and you know, utilizing the search engine to make sure some information can kind of just go all the way down to the deep depths of Google where it's not um, visible or it can be just eliminated at all if it's not, um, you know, pretty and it's just not something that you want to appear. And then other times you also want to just Google yourself to be in the habit of what information comes up. Did I make uh, a distasteful comment accidentally on someone's post? in, you know, just kind of like the heat of the moment where I was, you know, talking on someone's Facebook chat and I just said something and that may pop up. Facebook comes up on your, on Google as well. And so Instagram also will start showing up on, on Google and, and things like that. So you might want to consider um, looking at that and looking at how your online presence aligns with your brand story. And so from there, you also want to think about how consistent is your message, whether it's, you know, on your own website or on your LinkedIn, um, because before anyone actually, you know, decides to invite you to an interview or even before you go for a meeting, what are the chances that they've not already looked you up? They probably have. And so, your online presence is really that quick digital resume before you even hand in that hard copy. And so you really want to think about what is out there um, 
And is it actually cohesive? Does it align with who I am going to say I am before I meet the person that I meet? Um, regardless of whatever platform you use, your messaging should always be maintained. It should always be the same, whether you're in person or whether it's online. Um, your, your tone, your style, your value, and your community style should always be the same. Um, this is also very crucial and very imperative to your personal brand story. It's not something to be taken lightly, especially because we are in a very big digital age. This is something that you really want to take very importantly as you think about your brand story as well. And then as we've talked about, just as it would be an investment to look at um, your brand presence online, it's also an investment for you to invest in additional tools that will help you as you're creating your brand story. So these are some things that I um, would just recommend. If you're a big reader, these are some really great books that I think that you might enjoy reading that would really help in curating your brand story. So these are, if you also wanna take a screenshot of this screen, um, one of these, the one in the middle is the one that I read while I was doing my MBA, branding yourself. And it really also talks about that good balance of branding yourself, especially in a digital age, um, understanding what that means with social media. We all kind of take it casually, but it's something that should be taken seriously. A lot of employers will look you up, um, whether it's on Facebook, um, your, your LinkedIn is not just the only place that they will look you up on. Um, they're also wanting to see how do you represent yourself even on your social media platforms? Are you really true to who you say you are on those platforms as well? So thinking about how you're curating that story will be very important for you as well. Um, and then these other two books are just really good um, books when you think about your own brand, especially in your, if you're in a customer facing business, um, how you want to think about curating your brand story as well. And so I want to just leave you with this um, before we go on about talking about what your next steps are. Um, it's really important to just think about what you want to, one, be known for as you develop your brand story. And so your brand story will constantly, constantly change. And it should change. You as an individual are constantly changing. You're growing. You're evolving. Um, your brand story in your 20s will not look the same as your brand story in your 40s. You're in a completely different career path um, than, you know, in your 20s than you are in your 40s. And so your brand story will evolve. Um, so back to that, you know, that third question that we did in the polls beforehand, yes, your brand story will change and it should change and it should evolve. But authentically, you should still be the same person over and over again. Um, some of those core values should still be the same. They might just enhance and they might be um, unique to you over time. Um, and then they'll pivot um, over time as well, but they really should still be true to who you are. And so you want to just be consistent at you know, looking at how you build trust and attracting the connections and maintaining your cohesiveness without throughout your brand story. And then lastly, be yourself. It's so important in building your brand story. Who you are, you have so much to offer to the world just by being you, showing up as yourself. Um, no one can be you and no one can tell your story better than anyone else. And so when you show up consistently and always, always tell your brand story true to who you are, that's the least that you can do in order to make a difference. And so doing that, I think, will help us all as we continue to evolve on this journey. Um, I know everyone's headed toward success, and I look forward to seeing every single one of you at the top. So thank you so much for having me today. Thank you to Mrs. Odetokun and the entire PRI family. Um, I know this is a lot of information within a short period of time, so I'm pretty sure there's um, a little bit of time for some questions um, here at the end. So please feel free to ask away. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much, Edith. Um, that's a masterclass right there, you know. Um, you really touched all, you know, all the very important points. I, I feel like, whew, I had a refresher course right there. Thank you so very much. Can we give a round of applause, please? 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I see questions in the chat. I see someone raised their hand. Okay, I'm going to go with the person whose hand is raised first. Um, okay, Dr. Oladokun, please go ahead. Well, I just want to say um, thanks to Viola for curating this uh, session and to the team that's been working on this. Really, really phenomenal. And huge congratulations to Edith for doing a masterful, masterful job on personal branding. You hit the ball out of the park. Really, really good. Uh, you provided us with an excellent tour de force um, on branding. And I just want to encourage you, you know, if you haven't thought about uh, curating a blog where you can put similar sessions together, I highly encourage you um, to do that. Um, branding is as old as time. Actually, you know, if you, if you go back to scripture, uh, God introduces himself as I am. Uh, Jesus takes Saul and rebrands him as, as Paul. But he also says, and this is in line with what you shared earlier, um, Edith, you know, the Bible says, it says, a man's gift will make room for them and cause them to stand before great men. That's all about branding. I mean, if you don't have a good brand, you will never stand before anyone. I mean, whether you be man, whether you be woman. So I think you've touched all the major points um, here. And I'd just like to explore your thoughts on the transition between personal branding and corporate branding, if you have any ideas on that. But all in all, an excellent, truly superb presentation. Uh, thank you very much for, for this. Wow, Edith, coming from a communication guru to you, <laughs> about you, that is awesome. And yes, I totally agree. She did an awesome job. Again, a round of applause for her. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I think you have a question there. Um, did you did you see the question? Do you need me to read it out? And I think Dr. Olantok actually asked you a question, right? Um, between career and um, corporate branding. You want to take that first or you want to go to the chat? Okay, um, that was bridging the gap between personal branding and corporate branding? Yeah. Okay, and then in what, what regards? Um, bringing your own personal brand into the corporate world. Um, now, the, reason, the, reason why I asked, the reason why I asked the question is because for quite a number of people who may be attending this session today, they also run their personal businesses. So how do you, you know, bridge that divide between both personal and corporate? Do you see any symmetry there or do you see any distinctives? No, I think, I, I think they're 100% aligned. Um, and they should be. So your personal brand and your corporate brand should be essentially the same. Um, who you are as a brand is just the starting point um, to transitioning into your professional brand. And your professional brand essentially is what's going to speak volumes for you for your opportunities that would you know, show up in the workplace. Um, and so you can't have a personal brand in a corporate or professional brand. You can't have one without the other. Um, your personal brand is what speaks to you um, on numerous platforms, who you are in church, who you are um, with your family, who you are um, essentially in any marketplace. But your corporate brand is what speaks to you in the, the marketplace of the industry that you are working in. And so that's essentially your bread and butter of how you are transcending uh, the lines of how are you showing up and being and having the ability to be sustainable over time. And so you can look at and kind of, I, I hate to use this example, um, but he is top of mind. We'll take it the example of Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a good example of someone bridging their personal brand and their corporate brand. And we've seen the results of that. Um, his personal brand over time has had a result um, on his professional brand. And he's suffered financially um, because of some of the decisions that he's taken personally and then vice versa. And so 
you know, you do have to be careful about drawing that line and making sure that it stays cohesively the same um, all the way through. One might say that he hasn't been authentic um, over time, and maybe that's taken a result and he's, you know, taken a business hit. Um, and then some might say, well, he's riding the waves of his, of his fame and he's actually being cohesive. It really depends on your audience and how they perceive it. You know, there's a left and the right of it. Um, but I do think that, yes, they are 100% aligned and they're not separate um, from each other in any way, form or fashion. Thank you very much, Edith. And if I may add to that um, with a, a quick story, I recently managed that at a men's retreat and it happened that one of the men there, one of the guys there uh, is someone from my job, my former job. And afterwards he told me, he said, wow, I, I never knew this side of you. You know, I didn't know that you have this. Well, I, he knew that I had a nonprofit, but I didn't know that you could, you know, address things in this way and all that and all that. But having said that, I think you're still, it's still the same person I knew, just that I didn't know that you had this uh, uh, big nonprofit where you go and manage that to, so, you know, different, you know. And so the essence is that you, if you're looking at it like two circles, your career brand, your personal brand, there should be a kind of convergence. There should be something in the middle. There might be a few things that you don't carry, like maybe, um, or you, you don't go to, to, to work to talk about church, church, church all the time. But then there should be some core values because you're a person of faith that reflects at work, that reflects on how you do your work, that reflects on how you treat your team members or how you treat those who work for you. So those are things that will align irrespective of whether, oh, this is, you know, you don't want a situation where you're one person in your career, you're one person at work, and you're to total opposite. That means you're living a life. So they should, your core values should align. You know, at the middle of that circle, there should be core values that align, you know. So that's that's my little piece that I wanted to throw in there. So I see, I saw a question here. Let me see. Yeah, um, I, I so, want, um, okay, go ahead. Trends and um, I'll just read the question. It says, as trends and in, in platforms evolve, how can individuals ensure their personal brand remains relevant and adaptable over time? Um, and so what I believe you're asking is how do you um, remain relevant and adaptable on platforms as trends evolve? Um, and so I have a different perspective than what others might um, share and, and probably Mrs. Odek Tukun can probably relate to this too because we've had conversations on this. Um, I don't believe in being a jack of all trades just because it's a new trend that comes out. Um, I think you have to be smart. As trends come out and as different platforms come out and, and even within these platforms, there are trends that come out and they may or may not be relevant to your brand. Um, I take, for example, Instagram introducing threads. Um, for instance, everyone jumped on threads because threads was out and um, it was the thing to do. And so they were, you know, kind of blacklisting Twitter, but Twitter's now X and threads is not cool anymore within a matter of two months. Um, and so if someone had changed their entire branding strategy to adjust to taking an account for now this new thread change coming into play but then not understanding that Twitter was going to make or Elon was going to make this huge change um, in the marketplace you would have made an, made essentially a big move um, to your own, and this isn't really a personal brand, this is now a, a business brand, you would have made a huge move to your personal brand that may have been detrimental. And so I think it's important to be strategic um, and really be smart about how trends occur and how they emerge. Research it, understand them before they, um, before you make the leap onto them. So there will be numerous platforms. There will always be numerous platforms for you to market yourself on. Do I think that every person who has a personal brand needs to be on TikTok? 
No. Do I think that every person who has a personal brand needs to be on every single platform that's out there? No, Sim simply for the fact that you may not be able to handle it all, um, or it may not be right. And it may not be right for your audience, and it may not be right for you. It may not it may not even look right for you. It may not even align with who you are. And so you really want to be um, strategic about how you think about those things, even for your own personal brand. But it also goes back to those defining questions. Ask yourself, does this align with my purpose? Um, does this help me define who I am? Um, is this authentic to who my personal brand is and then is this authentic to my business brand and so as you know trends and platforms evolve go back to those key questions and ask yourself if it aligns then it's a yes and if it doesn't align then it's definitely a no so it's not everything that comes out that we need to jump on it's not everything it's again it's sometimes like it's not every opportunity that comes our way that we think is right it, sometimes it's not right and sometimes it is but you do have to ask yourself those key base questions does it align with my brand? That's important. Um, I see another question. I think we touched on this, that career branding different from business branding. It's not different. Um, pretty much aligned in the same. And then I think um, I don't see anyone else un unless anyone else has another question. Yes, ma'am. So in a situation where you find out that um, where you are headed before, or maybe you weren't heading anywhere before and now like you you're heading somewhere and you want to create a story about yourself you want this you want to define what your brand is how do you handle that like maybe wrong direction you want to turn around you want to rebrand you know or you had nothing before and all of a sudden you realize that oh i'm stepping or um maybe my career and th and i want to be known for something how how do you navigate the switch? Yeah. Um, so there there are a lot of uh, interesting stories, and I always like to use um, you know kind of really relevant stories of people who have done this. Um, you can take for example um, Prince Charles. He's been known for rebranding himself during the heat of his uh, chronic climax and and influx of situations with Princess Diana and how did he rebrand himself to make himself uh, appeal to the people of England. Um, you look at, again, Donald Trump, he is actually in the heat of rebranding. He was intentional at, about how he took his mugshot and he is going to use that for his re-election attempt in 2024. Um, so I think it's important when you think about how do you redefine yourself if you feel like you're going down a negative path? Uh, I would say one, a lot of times, and I think the two lessons that we can take from here is that you can't hide from the things that have already been done. People are going to feel um, however they're going to feel and more than likely, uh, whatever negative light that's been shared will be shared. The biggest thing you can do is to hide and act like it didn't happen. Um, and so you can own that, okay, whatever negative attribute or whatnot that may have happened and let's say your career um, has happened and now it's up to me to own it. Take, for example, me sharing the story of me being on an elevator with the CEO of Home Depot. Um, that's a defining moment. Many people may have not known about it, but personally, I knew that it was a moment for me to redefine who I was within myself. And so you have to be honest um, with whatever that negative aspect is that's associated with your brand. Um, and then actively work to change the narrative. And so by actively working to change the narrative, you'd have to do certain things, do the same tactics. Um, it's almost like going on a campaign already for yourself. Um, so when you're in an opportunity or in you're in a room of people, again, in the workplace, we'll use the situation of, let's say you've built up uh, the reputation of, being known for being late 
a person that's known for being late now needs to change uh, that personal brand story and start showing up on time and building that credibility up over time by consistently doing the things that would be associated with someone who shows up on time and becomes dependable. Um, but you've got to actively say, hey, I know that I have been late um, in time past. I have let the team down, but I want you to know that I'm committed to doing better. I'm committed to changing that narrative. And by changing the narrative, these are the steps that I'm going to take. Uh, and sometimes people don't get the opportunity to be so vocal about how they're changing their narrative. And so you have to do that by showing action um, through there. So I hope that answers the, the question in a sense. Okay, I, um, and you know, of course, this is a, a parenting platform. How would you suggest that a parent, um, especially on the home phone, create like, for instance, like you said, if you've been known for being late as you know, as as a career person, and you want to now, you know, you've seen the light, and you want to, you know, like make things right. So, as a parent, let's say you've been you've been um, relating with your children in a not so um positive way and you you you've seen the light you've you've seen things area where you need to make changes how do you suggest um navigating that we all know that the home front is always the toughest because that's where <laughs> everybody knows you know, you know you, you can hide in the workplace you can't hide at home so how do you suggest that a parent makes a change of course it's not really maybe it's not career it's not professional but hey, this is who you are. This is who your kids have known you to be or your spouse has known you to be. And now you've seen that that's not right. That's not the right path. How would you handle that? Um, I think, again, uh, sometimes you'll see that redefining a brand comes with starting with, with an, an apology. Um, apologizing for, again, the narrative that your children may have previously associated with you. Um, it could be mommy or daddy always shouts at me and I have been so afraid to tell them um, anything because I'm afraid that they're going to yell at me. Well, addressing the behavior um, and apologizing to the child because one, they, they're they human, they deserve an apology um, just like anyone else would regardless of their age. And then two, again, deciding to be different from then on. It doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect um, and that you're going to always not yell or always not be frustrated or whatever the, the situation may be, but it means that you are intentionally working towards, again, changing that narrative. So I always like to think that my kids are my toughest critics, but they're actually my the ones that give me the truest advice and the truest feedback. Um, they see me, the good, the bad, the ugly. And at the same time, your kids are kind of the, the wonderful example of God's graciousness towards us because for some reason they still come back with the biggest hug and so much love that sometimes you're like, man, I'm undeserving of this. And so I think on the home front, if you can take that same approach of owning what your shortcomings may be as a parent and saying, hey, I'm sorry, this isn't okay. And I've hurt you, um, I need to change help me understand how I can change how can you know mommy or daddy talk to you differently and how can I do better and then from there intentionally work along with them on you know when I am starting to get excited I'm going to walk away <laughs> and come back and have the conversation with you when I'm less upset. Um, doing little actions like that, I think, will help you to change the narrative at home for yourself um, as a parent. Because, again, you you represent yourself even at home. And they will be able to vouch for whatever um, you say to the outside world. That, you know, if you're sweet and kind outside to your neighbor, you should be able to be sweet and kind all the time to, you know, your kids and your spouse. 
all the time too. This is someone, if you're just starting a business and you want to create a brand, where do you start and what is the most important thing to focus on? Okay, um, so where do you start? You start with discovery. Um, and that discovery session, again, begins with defining who you are, um, looking at who you want to service. Um, and I'll share just a little bit about myself um, and how, you know, I'm an entrepreneur myself. And so um, how we started essentially was defining what we wanted to represent, what um, area of you know, business and who we wanted to service for our clients. Um, a lot of brand agencies really hone in on a specific type of clientele. We also decided to hone in on what clientele we wanted to um, serve. And so by doing that, we asked ourselves who we are. Um, and so that in, involved us, again, asking those same type of questions during our discovery session. We spent a lot of time asking others for feedback. How would they describe us? And that was really key in helping to you know, just kind of formulate what um, colors we came up with, our business name, all of those things are intentional. Um, I know that in today's world, uh, you know, bright colors don't sell. Everyone wants aesthetics, and everyone wants to feel warm and cozy when they look at colors. Um, at the same time, I also feel like that's a descriptor for myself, and so that was huge in creating colors uh, for my brand. And then at the same time, uh, understanding the clientele that we wanted to focus on, taking in our background, who would we be able to service based upon having my background um, in business and having my background in in you know customer service and and that, how would I be able to service you know our clientele based upon those you know, questions that we were asking ourselves. And then two, um, I think it's important when you're starting a business to ask yourself, am, am I in it uh, to just do it for a moment um, because I want it to make a quick need or am I doing it because this is a passion that I truly believe in? Um, and if it's a passion that you truly believe in, I think it really helps you formulate that brand story. When you truly believe in something and it's truly a passion of yours, um, it really helps to shape the entire narrative. It's so much easier to tell a story and give a why when there's a belief behind it. Um, when there's not a belief, and it's just, you know, it, it will come out when people ask you, hey, why, why did you decide to do this business? You're more than likely, whatever's within you, you're going to say, oh, yeah, I decided to do it because, girl, I need to pay my bills. Or you're going to be like, I am really passionate about this. And I really think that I, I can really help small business owners shape how they think about business and shape how they think about branding. Um, so believing in your business, believing in the passion behind it, I think are some of the key things to focus on as you start um, your business. And then the other things, you know, building your brand identity. Um, logo is key in it. You look at things like, uh, or brands like Apple and Nike, they have changed and adapted over time. But even as they've adapted over time, you will be able to recognize Coke Pepsi, Apple, regardless of the year that mm -hmm. they've changed their logo, it has not changed. And so that's key to being authentic to your brand. Um, there may be different components that may change and shift because yes, we want to keep up um, with time and we still want to be relevant, but there are still things that will be consistent um, over, over time through there. So there, there are a lot of things that you focus on um, when, when starting your business and creating your brand. But I think asking yourself those defining, per, um, those defining questions, such as what's my purpose? Um, who do I intend to serve? Um, and why do I intend to serve them? Will help you to build upon everything else through there. Um, another question I see on here, uh, we did touch on tying your personal um, personality type. Oh no, we did not touch on that. Tying your personality type into personal branding. That is big. Um, if you are someone with 
an introverted personality, but your target audience career sector requires an extroverted personality. How can one navigate building a personal brand while staying true to yourself? Okay, so you're speaking right here to the choir. Um, would you believe that I am an extremely introverted person? I, um, this is not my comfort zone at all. Um, but because of, and, and for a lot of people, you'd be surprised that they're, they're in areas that they're not comfortable with according to their personality type. But I think it's important to understand that your personal, your personality type is not a complete defining aspect of your personal brand. And it shouldn't be a defining aspect of how you market yourself. I'm an introvert, but I also have passions and those passions intersect with also my professional brand. And so I can't let my personality type get in the way of me being able to market myself in other, in other ways. So there's times that I have been um, in the room where I've needed to network with other people. Um, I've needed to, you know, walk up to strangers. For example, again, I go back to the fact of being on the elevator with the CEO. And because I am an introvert, it's not easy for me to just say, hi, how are you? Craig, Veneer, it's so great to be on the elevator with you. That is not easy for me as an introvert. But I think it's important when you do understand your personality type, it's not that you're doing anything that um, is not true to you. I don't think I've articulated myself. I've said what I needed to say, but I've not gone outside of who I am in any moment of this conversation. What I'm doing here is the professional side of who I am but I've not done it. What would be false to my personality type is if I now said, I am so excited to be here speaking with you. And this is such a, that is completely false. When you are now <laughs> overcompensating for who you are as a person, because you feel like you want to reach a certain group of people, you can still be an introvert and still connect. Introverts, have the ability to connect with people just the same way that people who are extroverted have the ability to connect with people. We just connect with people differently. So identify how your personality trait and the strength of your personality trait contributes to who you are and use that to your advantage to be able to leverage that in, within your personal brand and leverage that in you know your ability to boost yourself within your career. Um, I'm an, I'm an introvert, but I still don't shy away from public speaking. I'm an introvert and I still enter in rooms boldly with my head held high. Um, I'm an introvert. And as I'm sitting here, I still have bubbles in my stomach, but I'm still doing it <laughs> um, true to who I am. I, I think it, it just takes a little bit of growth. Sometimes they say that, you know, you have to be uncomfortable in order to kind of move and progress. Um, but I think, again, um, it's just a, it's an aspect of who you are, but it's not the complete aspect of who your personal brand is and how it represents you as well. So your, your personality type doesn't stop you from building your personal brand. So it says, how do you navigate through a work environment that is so limiting and does not allow you to bring your best personal brand? You obviously do not want to leave the job at the moment. Um. Okay, so I, I would ask you in that moment, this is, this is kind of a, a, a two-pronged question. Yes, you can have your personal brand, but your personal brand is, is that statement. Your personal brand should not limit you from doing your work. Your personal brand should help you do your work regardless of the environment that you're in. So if I'm trying to understand the, the question, yes, we have our personal brand, but under the corporate, yes, I think you want to explain further. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Um, I just want to create this scenario. Um, I'm a lecturer and I'm a physiotherapist. Okay. Um, there's a paradigm where I work where student centeredness is not the goal. You just want to, to teach. You may not necessarily focus on learning. And then for somebody like me, based on my exposure and my engagement and interactions with um, students elsewhere, I know that you have to focus on the students. It is not something that you should pride in when students fail. But somehow where you work is such that they ju you, just, you just have to teach. Because I know this is not right. And I'm not in a position to effect any kind of change because I feel that students should not fail. I feel that if students fail, then the lecturer should be brought to fall. So in that case, where you have a personal brand that is student-centered, and that is what your focus is, that is what your, that's what defines me as a person. I want to be student-centered, but the environment I live in is not so much focused on that. So what do I do? Do I just keep aligning my vision with the vision that we have in that environment? Or do I, and I don't want to leave because I do not have any other job. So that is exactly what is on my mind. I hope that brings clarity. Thank you. Yeah, so it, um, so here I'd say I'd, I'd even just kind of step out of using the word personal branding. Um, you are a teacher who's passionate about students and your teaching style differs from the style of your organization, um, which is great. But I would say in order to build up your expertise, which is a part of your personal brand, you've got to immerse yourself in the environment that you're already in first. Um, so have you taken the time to adapt to the environment that you're in? A lot of times we go into places and we just want to change things immediately because we feel like we're so passionate about what's going on. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay, I was just about saying that I've been in that environment for over 30 years. And, and you know, when you have a paradigm, it's not really very easy to change except to get people to, and I've tried giving seminars, trying to get people to understand why you have to do things this way. But you see, um, I, I, in terms of adapting, my, immersing myself into the environment, I can say that I'm fully immersed in the environment. It's not just getting into a place and I've not worked for one year and I want to change the narrative. No, I've been working in that environment for so many years. Even though, um, the values that I have, I didn't have those values when I started working. I got to, um, I got those values based on my interactions and engagement with some other people outside my work environment, which has been for over 15 years now, but still is a paradigm, is a paradigm that is very, very difficult to change. And yet it's the, the, the values that I have is about my personal branding. I can, I go on websites, I create my own kind of websites where I define myself as a lecturer outside that environment where I teach. But I still feel that I have the opportunity to reach out to more people because my audience in that environment is a larger one to impact positively on the students that I teach. But somehow, I was like, I'm, I'm just, just moving with the tide and just doing my own little bit in the little space that I have. Thank you. Yeah, so so I would say, again, I, I get that you're, you're passionate about it, but I, I do feel that this is in the same realm. Your, your personal brand and the branding of the organization that you're within. Uh, if you're there, you're there for a purpose. Um, and I'm a big um, believer that if, whatever my passions are, if they're not coinciding with the organization, one, I've, I've got to step back and say, I've got to get buy-in some way, somehow. So somewhere within there, the organization has not found or doesn't recognize um, the value of within your personal brand. 
Um, and that could be, and I, I can only speak high level on there and to be as neutral as possible, that could be for several reasons. Um, maybe there's been a fall through in some kind of collaboration um, or communication or how you guys work through implementing plans and teaching and, and things like that. Um, I'm not sure what that looks like, but I would say that in order to build that expert power, we first have to support, build the credibility, build the trust in order for others to then come along to buy in to what we are trying to do as well. Um, that would be what I would recommend or would say from a high level. It, it's kind of a hard thing to answer. It, it, I see that you've, you did say that you've been there for 30 years. Um, I'm not quite sure what the, the dynamics might be um, between the organization and yourself. And then again, if there's, it's a curriculum based um, program, there is some form of involvement where it can't just be my personal brand speaks louder than the brand of the organization because that's important. At this point, it's the organization's brand is important. And I've got to show that I'm pushing that um, because when people see that you're willing to push their their agenda, especially if it's the organization's agenda and you're following um, that agenda before trying to push your own, then you're more than likely going to be able to one, gain trust. And you gain that trust then in order to now break way to give recommendations. And that when you give the recommendations, that's where the credibility comes into play from there. But um, I will allow anyone else to tune in or, or chime in to that. Who I, may would, I would like to add to the um, conversation. Better I, than think, I, I, I think really it's, I don't, it doesn't sound to me like a, a, a branding issue. I think it's more of a, a values issue, uh, organizational value versus her personal values are misaligned. Um, of course, your values contribute to your personal brand. It's more of an, it's, it's a values issue primarily. So if your personal values are not aligned with organizational values, I think that's what you need to work out. Um, it's, it's strictly focused on that. If you've been there for 30 years and your values, you realize now are not aligned with the organization's values and they're not um, student centered and you're not able to abide by that, you need, that's what I think you need to focus on and really work out. It's really not a brand issue, it's about your values. And I'd like to chip in as well. Um, they all, especially considering the fact that um, you know you've been you've been there for a long time, and um, it's I, I think it's a more uh, uh, it's also a cultural issue. You know, this is how they do things here. You know, and that's how that's the, how everybody flows. You know, but then you have you have a value system that in my maybe in my understanding I would say is superior. You know, and you want to you want to impact people. You want to impact your students. You know. I would say that would be at the level of one-on-one -on -one interactions. Like when, like be intentional about letting your values, your higher values uh, come into play as you relate with the students, even as you interact with your, with even your colleagues, your peers, because maybe as you interact with them and they see the higher level at which you're operating, that may trickle down to changes. But it's not going to be something that you can, you know, go out there and change because one, especially like you said, you you are not in the in the in the place of uh you're not at the place where you you're a decision maker. And even if you are a decision maker, maybe you are one of many. So you are not able to change things like you would want to. But my suggestion would be that as long as you're there, let people's interaction of you be speak at the level of your personal brands and pers personal brand and personal values so that the contrast is there. Yes, there's this general culture of value system that is that is not working for students. But in as much as anyone takes your class or interacts with you, you let your higher values come into play. And then you, by doing that, you have done what you can do. We are only accountable for what we uh, can do. You know, you are not responsible for something that is not um, your pay grade, that is not uh, within your level of influence and all of that. But to the extent that you're relating with individual students or groups of students, then let your 
let your personal brand, let your personal values shine forth. That's what I would suggest. If you are early in your career, I would say maybe start looking for, you know, organizations that your values align with them, even though they, there is, um, it's not, um, it's not common that you would find a place where your, your values align 100%. So you also, you always would have to do a trade-off, you know, but if the things that are conflicting are really things of, you know, maybe ethics and faith and things like that, then that's when you would think that, okay, uh, this is an extreme. But if they don't violate your ethics, they don't violate your faith and all of that, then seek to work within the system to make you know, like individual connections and individual changes, you know, that would um, that would work um, the way you want to. But of course, you don't have the choice to change the culture or change an entire organization, change the culture of an entire organization by yourself. You can only do so much like one-on-one, -on -one, maybe as you relate with other people in your department, in your faculty, then things may begin to change over time. That's what I would want to achieve. Thank you. All right, I think um, we have given Edith enough questions I, and I don't see anything coming through. So at this point, I, I would begin to wrap it up. Um, on a final note, Edith, is there something you would like for us to uh, take away? Like, let's say somebody came in late or, you know, you know, one final note, one final word for us as we craft our personal brands or our business brands, career brands, you know, one final word from you. Um, yeah, uh, so remember that your personal brand is your unique story. It should highlight your, um, your unique values, your unique skill sets, and to, as you're curating your personal brand, to always be authentic, show up as yourself, um, continue to revisit your personal brand as you grow and evolve and as your career grows and evolve. Um, evolves and just remember that your personal brand is your opportunity to show off your best self. Um, it should highlight your skills and your accomplishments. And as you continue to curate it, I look forward to seeing every single one of you um, at the top. You can definitely do it. Um, having a personal brand and having it top of mind is so important to your success. And so I wish each and every one of you um, a lot of success. And well, I went to look in the scriptures for something that, um, you know, if the Bible has anything about um, branding, you know, and I actually asked chat GPT. <laughs> I actually asked that chat, chat GPT and I wanted to quickly share that. Let me see if I can uh, pull it off again. So. I asked, uh, I asked the first question and then I said, I asked the second question and it, these are the scriptures it gave me. And I'm like, okay, um, Proverbs 22, 29, Colossians 3, 23, Matthew 5, 16. And it's funny because like, okay, it, says, it gives me the scripture and then it gives an explanation like this one. It says, this verse emphasizing the importance of excellence and skill in your work, which can contribute to success and recognition. And I just wanted to buttress what, you know, it did shared with us, you know, and, you know, tying it back to the Bible and Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. You know, it did kept talking about excellence, you know, working hard, you know, building, building, building takes time and, you know, it takes effort. And it says this verse encourages dedicating yourself wholeheartedly to your endeavors, which can lead to success as you do your work as if it's for a higher purpose. And Matthew 5.16 in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. While not explicitly about branding, this verse highlights the idea of being a positive influence and making a good impression, which is what branding is about, right? We want to make a good impression. We want to you know, let people perceive us the right way, making a good impression on others, which can contribute to what? Personal success. So that's <laughs> what I wanted to share. You know, so for those of us who are um, who are uh, Christians, th those are scriptures for you to um, encourage you to work on your brand. And finally, as we wrap up, um, let me go back and say, so we've done the question and answer and we've had comments. It's been an engaging session. Again, I want to take the time to really thank Edith for 
you know, coming and sharing so much with us. So um, please continue to follow us. Our social media handles are listed. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. Well, um, we need to change that bird <laughs> to X. You know, we're on YouTube. <laughs> and of course, you can reach us via email. Um, thank you so much for spending time with us. We hope you have learned uh, a few things. And we also hope that you, um, maybe this is not new to you, but you have refreshed your knowledge. And of course, we look forward to seeing you in September. In September, we'll be talking about admissions process, you know, for those of us who still have kids in that age range, you know, um, we want to bust them in. We want to talk about even the new um, Supreme Court's ruling on how they've taken out affirmative action in admission and financial aid and all of that. How does that affect you? How does that affect your child? What schools can your child go to apply to? Do you, you know, what, what does it look like for FAFSA right now? So um, that's what we're going to talk talking about in, um, in September. So please continue to follow us. Our dates will be published very soon. And always uh, check our YouTube channel, PRI underscore ATL, for recordings of these and many more events that we've had. You know, again, I want to appreciate you, Edith. And I, I think I said, but just let me say it again. Edith is actually the social manage, media manager for parenting resources and initiatives. She has helped us to turn our brand around. She that our website, our Instagram, our Facebook pages are full of resources for you. I encourage you to go there and just take a look. There's, there's nothing you're looking for as the parents that you won't find there. I can make most of that. We have tons and tons of resources that uh, she and her team have curated for us. And um, you would be blessed when you go visit one of our websites or our social media pages. Again, thank you for coming and sharing with us, Edith. We look forward to having you on another time. And if you do start your blog, like Dr. Ladoku said, uh, please be, sh be, be, uh, be kind enough to share with us and we would blast it out for you. Of course, you run our social media pages anyway, so feel free to share them, to share your blog or your 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 whatever new things you do on our pages. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. God bless you. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.